Well, today, Senate Republicans voted to go nuclear over President Trump's Supreme Court nominee, Neil Gorsuch. The move allows them to eliminate the 60 vote threshold to end a filibuster and confirm Gorsuch with just a simple majority vote in the Senate. The Senate's now expected to confirm him as an associate judge tomorrow. Joining me now by phone is Ed O'Keefe, congressional reporter for The Washington Post. OK, Ed, we've thrown around this term going nuclear. What is it and why was it used now? Well, it was a term dreamed up by uh, former Senate Majority Leader Trent Lott several years ago. Uh, and he called it the nuclear option because it was sort of seen as one of the most destructive things you could do to really fundamentally reshape the Senate in the way it works. You know, it's always been the slower, more deliberative body. And what they did today was, in essence, make it a little faster and, and less deliberate around here, at least when it comes to nominations. Now, anyone nominated by a president, whether it's a cabinet secretary, some head of a commission, or a Supreme Court justice, now can be confirmed by the Senate with a simple majority vote. You just need to have a majority of senators present voting for you. That is a big change uh, because senators have always had the right in the past to throw up various roadblocks to slow things down, and now they can't. Uh, this was a you know widely expected move. It happened pretty efficiently for a place that doesn't function that well. And, uh, you know, we're now on a glide path, essentially, to seeing the confirmation of Gorsuch probably by Friday evening. Wow. And explain to us, Ed, why is it that no one's pulled this tactic before? Let's have order. Well, uh, in fact, it kind of was pulled before. Back in 2013, the Democrats did it to Republicans who had been holding up a bunch of executive branch and federal judge nominees that Barack Obama had put out. And they, at that point, decided to change the rules. Democrats didn't say simple majority, up or down vote, because Republicans have been blocking them. At the time, though, they did not add the Supreme Court to the list of nominations that could be confirmed so easily, believing that because it's a lifetime appointment and it's, you know, one of nine seats in the third branch of government, uh, atop the third branch of government, that it deserved more careful and deliberative debate. But Democrats, Mr. seeing that Demo or Republicans, sorry, seeing that Democrats were going to do what they did today by blocking Gorsuch in that initial vote, said, well, we're just going to change the rules. And the big concern now is that someday, maybe 10, 20 years from now, maybe even sooner than that, there will be such an uprising among one party controlling the place, upset with the other one for blocking legislation, that they then take away the filibuster for legislation. And at that point, you really are just making the Senate a smaller version of the House of Representatives where things can get through on simple majority votes. Mm. Walk us through this. Ed. How, what's going to happen tomorrow? How will this vote go down with Judge Gorsuch? Well, at this point, uh, we, we expect it to be a, a 55 to 45 uh, margin. We have three Democrats, uh, Joe Manchin, Heidi Heitkamp, and Joe Donnelly from West Virginia, North Dakota, and Indiana, saying that they will vote with all 52 Republicans to confirm Gorsuch. Uh, but you've had pretty strong resistance from most Democrats throughout this process. They're upset that Republicans were allowed a hearing for a vote last year on Garland. And I think you're... they just don't, and they and they don't like Gorsuch because uh, you know they just don't feel that he's uh, been as forthcoming as Supreme Court nominee should be, and they worry he could be too conservative uh, on the court and, and perhaps tilt it back to a very uh, you know conservative. Uh, the set of justices who would uh, make a lot of changes, uh, you know, that run counter to uh, the constituencies of Democrats. And I just want to switch gears for a second and talk to you about Congressman Devin Nunes, who stepped aside on the House Intelligence Committee's Russia probe. Why do you think it is, Ed, that it took so long for him to step aside? And how do you think this could impact the investigation? Well, I, the reason he stepped aside today, he says, is that because uh, there were some accusations formally filed with the Office of Congressional Ethics, with various groups alleging that he was mishandling classified information. That's about as strong a charge, whether it's proven to be true or not, that you can level against a member of the intelligence committees up here. And I think that was really the final straw, that he and Republican leaders realized he had to get out of the way and no longer be a distraction to what really has become uh, an incredible sideshow up here. What began as a very serious attempt to look into this has become a huge distraction. You can't go two days up here without some new head-scratching kind of development in this Russia issue coming out. And at this point, he just decided it was time to step aside. He's not renouncing his chairmanship of the Intelligence Committee. He's merely handing over responsibility for this investigation to three other members, Republican members of the committee. 
But I also think, Rena, it's important to remember a recess of two weeks begins essentially tomorrow. And I think there was growing concern among Republicans who have very little to show for their first three months, four months uh, in office this year, that they were going to go home, once again face angry constituents at town hall meetings or other public events. And by removing Nunez, which has become, and, and, and you know, who's become a controversial figure in a very few short weeks, it, it will allow Republicans to say, well, look, you know, he got out of the way and we're trying to keep focused on a serious investigation and make sure this isn't uh, a sideshow as it has been in the last few weeks. And we know that this investigation will now be led by Texas Congressman Mike Conway and also helping him Congressman Gowdy and Rooney. What do we know about them and are they considered honest brokers on the Hill? Well, we'll see. Uh, Mike Conway comes from uh, Midland, Texas, uh, Odessa, that area of the state, one of the most pro-Trump congressional districts in the country. I think he went with more than 75 percent of the vote there. Uh, Conway is actually also a good friend of George W. Bush, the former president. They sort of ran in the same circles back in the day. And he's also chairman of the Agriculture Committee. So he's a pretty senior member in good standing. And, and Democrats signal today they like the guy, they're willing to work with him, and they trust that he will lead a pretty thorough investigation. Trey Gowdy, of course, uh, earned most of his acclaim handling the uh, Benghazi investigation a few years ago, looking to whether or not that was properly handled by the Obama administration. And Tom Rooney is a, is a pretty loyal lieutenant to Speaker Ryan and to other Republican leaders. Uh, but they're all serious members of the Intelligence Committee, and they'll work with Adam Schiff, who's the ranking Democrat, to uh, make sure that that investigation can be salvaged and come to whatever conclusions it finds in the coming months. And before I let you go, how do you think that the House Ethics Committee, you were talking about that probe, will handle the complaints against Nunes? What's the process there? Well, they, the, the allegations have been made, and the, and the office essentially acknowledged today that they're looking into them. Uh, these things can be settled either rather quickly or they can drag out for quite a while. But that is why Nunes understood that he had to get out of the way today, because these things have a way of distracting uh, from, from a congressman's official work. And uh, there's been griping for years among members of both parties that the ethics process uh, is too secretive and can create real clouds over the future of a congressman. Uh, but again, the accusation that was made here is pretty serious, that he was mishandling information, uh, classified information. And I believe this stems from the work he was doing there where he went from the Capitol to the White House to tell the president about information he'd uncovered. And then it was later revealed that, in fact, it looked like White House officials may have been helping him with this. That's what the accusation is focused on. Uh, and it goes to the real heart of, of Nunes' credibility as it's been damaged, frankly, in the last few weeks uh, since he made those moves. So it can be a serious thing. It's led in the past to members uh, having to resign because the, the uh, accusations are seen as so serious that it might merit criminal investigation. Uh, in this case, we'll see what happens. But Nunes was pretty strong in saying today that he believes that they're baseless accusations and ones that he hopes he can address pretty quickly. Ed O'Keefe in Washington. Thank you, Ed. Take care.